Hello, my name is Emma McGuire, working under Dr. Andre Antunes, and today I'm going to be exploring how halobacteria's biotechnological applications can reveal a research gap in astrobiology. First off, what are these guys? Um, in the three domains of life, we have eukarya, bacteria, and archaea. And while the name is a bit misleading, these guys are actually archaea. So more specifically, they're halophiles. And archaea typically thrive in really extreme environments, and that's the case for these guys. Um, they're considered an extremophile, which are organisms that thrive in a really high extreme environment. Uh, more specifically, halophiles thrive in a really high salinity content, so lots of salt. Um, natural habitats include brine pools, hypersaline lakes, even salted fish. The reason these guys are important for astrobiology is because they, they thrive in really high salinity contents, and most of the water that we see on other planets have a really high salinity content or are a type of ocean. And water is often associated with the search for life, so they go kind of hand in hand together. The first phase of this project included us essentially getting a broad overview of their different applications in biotech. And the three allocations and subjects we came up with were materials production, recycling treatment and energy, and health and nutrition. And I was assigned to the allocation for recycling treatment and energy. Uh, for recycling, it seems a little bit on the materials production side, but it actually creates um, these really sustainable plastics. So that's helpful in recycling business because um, we don't actually have to put as much energy into the recycling. We can create more sustainable plastics. But the majority of the applications I found were within treatment. So we have oil recovery for spillage, uh, metal ion bioabsorption, radioactive cleanup, um, pollution cleanup, aiding in shit and de degradation, and biohydrometallurgy, which helps with e-waste cleanup. And then finally, energy. There's a lot of energy um, applications because of their bacteriodorphin production, and that can be um, engineered to create a lot of energy for optometry, data storage. There's tons of applications. So this was the uh, comparison between um, whether or not it was mentioned in astrobiological studies. You can see that the majority of the species that are explored include Halobacterium salinarium, and that includes another one of its strains. There's a pretty big gap in the astrobiological explorations within this. What it tells us is that the majority of what we're seeing follows one specific species, and we need to expand beyond that. And I also found that a lot of the applications for biotech didn't include a species. So there, sh there shows to me that there's a clear um, lack of speciation within this community. So before we work on astrobiological applications, the first thing we need to do is work on speciation of these organisms because it'll allow us to narrow down their applications. For future considerations, the most important thing is increasing the research for each of these species, most especially the ones that haven't been researched at all. More specifically, Halo Arculea and Neutrino Bactiae family. We just need to bridge that gap between understanding biotechnological applications with astrobiology because there's a lot that it can offer, um, especially these halobacteria. Which while the research that we have is great and helpful, uh, the research definitely needs to increase and continue for astrobiological considerations. And this is my references. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.